and welcome back. So we are still working on our Airbnb clone and today I'm gonna keep working on styling and layout, just putting the finishing touches to the app. Um, so this homepage screen is looking okay, I would say, but on the other hand, uh, the search results here, yeah, there's some work that needs to be done. Now, we have a, a mock-up to work from. Um, which has a search result screen right here. So uh, it looks like we can probably reuse our grid layout for uh, the search results. Actually, I think on Airbnb, yeah, they, they also use a... They also use a grid and they have the map on the side here. So there wasn't any map in the mockup, but we can probably fit it in somewhere. As for the filters, uh, they have them up here on Airbnb. Okay, yeah, we, we can probably come up with something. That, that looks like a pretty cool uh, location though. So unusual look for a Japanese house. Wow, it looks nice. There's lots of like uh, old renovated Japanese house in, in Kyoto, but what's strange about this one is that the exterior looks completely like different than the interior. Anyway, I'm getting distracted again. Back to the code. So first thing we want to do is probably, um, yeah, use the grid layout for this. And the reason why we're not using it is simply because we are missing uh, the rooms grid class. Yeah, rooms grid. So that's already a bit better. Now we still have some layout issues because, right. Um, so this would, okay, we actually want rooms grid at this level of our nesting. And, um, so this will be rooms, uh, search results. Actually, let's do this. Now I'm thinking maybe here I could just import, um, wait, I'm in, in, in the wrong file. Okay. Forget about that. Still not fully way woken up and I was distracted by the, the map, um, but I was looking for the map component that shows the actual map, not uh, the map function. Um, so here is where I want to do uh, rooms grid. And here is where I want to do uh, room search results contents. And here room search results. Okay. So what I was saying, it might make sense to reuse rooms list here. The reason we are not doing that is because right now we are using a custom resolver for uh, the search, but I'm not convinced that we actually need that custom resolver and we might be able to just use with list. So, okay, our uh, results, oh yeah, I moved the map, sorry. Our results are um, displayed in a grid. Now you might notice we are not displaying the price here and that's because in uh, with search here we have a, a custom fragment that doesn't include the price. So that's one reason why using with list might be better because um, 
you know, you can control the fragment and it's not hard coded. So we might um, switch it back later. But for now, okay, let's not worry about that. Uh, we probably want to make the map uh, wider. So how would we do that? Uh, room search, room search results, components map style width. Um, I can probably do this. Okay. Uh, I could also set it in CSS, to be honest. But it, it does need like a hard coded height because if you don't give it one, uh, it will just not display anything, it will just collapse to, to zero. So um, I, I don't know. Yeah, let's let's leave it like this for now, but I will so I will do this and then give it a class name. Um So I'm always using long class names. Uh, so that I don't need to nest the classes, you know, it's always better if you can avoid nesting in your CSS So it, it's kind of following the, the BAM pattern, but in a not in a very strict way So this would be the room search results Okay, what about those filters? So let, let's stick to the, the mockup. So they have this kind of pop over, pop up thing. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna bother with that for now. Although, well, it is pretty good that um, is displaying the search uh, terms again. So we might want to do that. How would we do this? I think the easiest way would be to just reuse the same component, right? So room search. Um, so that's that's the main page. So I'm going to do room search um, form import. Now, the form by default, it won't show the, it won't be pre-filled. So if we do want to pre-fill it, we will, could do so from the router, uh, except for the location field, which is not passed currently to the URL. Um, how do we want to do this? So here we we are geocoding the 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 location. This field is geocoded when we click search, and it sends a query to the Google server, so it discards the actual contents of the field. Now. We probably actually want to keep that content and pass it on to the next route as well, right? So here in the query, uh, we're saying we're adding LNG, LAT. Here we're adding from and to. Uh, we will also add um, I guess location but we might want to encode that. So I think um, what is it? encode URI component. Yeah. I think that's what we want to do, but then we want to prefill the, 
these values as well. So how do we pre-fill them? So from would be, so we first we need to access the props. So we'll do that, then props location query from, same with two, and then location. Except here we will uh, need to decode So that, that could work, except except that we need to, to do this. And then here as well, um, So, okay, f let's go back. Yeah, location and define that, that's normal. So we wanna do, um, maybe something like that. Okay, now let's pick some dates. So August 10th to 20th and the location will be Bastille in Paris. Okay, that seems to work. And uh, the real test will be, let's close this and see. Yeah, so it gets pre-filled correctly. Now, um, actually not quite correctly because uh, the date is not selected again. Or is it? Maybe it is, maybe there's just no style to indicate which date is selected. Let's see. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure I would exp would have expected that when you select a date, it would uh, change something in the calendar, like highlight the date or something. Weird. I, f I feel like that's what happens for... Um, yeah. So I guess what's going on is um, this whole deal with... Uh, controlled and, and controlled components. Um, because now its value is equal to this state from. Let, let, let's uh, look up the documentation for that. Uh, that component. So uh, do we want to use this as a control component or uncontrolled component? And also uh, this will depend from the way we are using it here. Actually, okay. So we are specifying a value. So this Wait, or, um, no, sorry, we're not using that. The, not using that one, we are importing the, the date time picker component directly, so we can do what we want. So value is this state from, but on change, you know, we do have an on change update from date. Um, do we maybe want to 
just do this and then when we submit the form that's where we would do we would format it properly and maybe we do this just so we know that we're always passing a moment objects to the component and not just a string like that. Maybe that's why it didn't like, because we were uh, just using strings. Moment is not defined, fair enough. <sighs> Sorry. Okay, yeah better now um we don't need the time is there a way to disable the time Ah, oh, okay. So we can set time format to false. And we will do the same in the bookings form here. Okay, nice. So we are showing our search again. If we look back at the mockup, showing the search below that, we want the filters. Well, that's pretty neat. It's like a live prototype using uh, InVision. So yeah, the filters will just clean this up a bit. Um, give that some classes so maybe the URL UL will, will be filters plural and this whole thing will be or hmm. Okay, yeah, let's do it like this. Now let's go back to our room CSS file. I'm gonna actually create another uh, kind of section. I guess technically this is part of the search results, but you know, let's let's keep things separate and, and nice and clean. And the list, so we don't want to have the, the style. Uh, so list. None will uh, do padding zero and margin zero as well. We want to do display flex. Um, flex wrap wrap. And here with 50% uh, uh, just you know you, uh, building a simple grid with flexbox and so with um,
Okay. Maybe some uh, some margin bottom. Um, let's bump down the font size a bit. I'm also gonna give this like a section title. So well, let, let's internationalize this from the start. I'm gonna I'm gonna create a new section title so which will be similar to a page title maybe uh, but maybe like smaller font size so and um, let's use the same section title class for the search results room search I think so room search results here. Um, was it an H2 or H3? Yeah, H2. Okay, looking a lot better. Maybe a bit of margin below the filters. Nice. So, okay, one problem we have right now is uh, it's scrolling back to the top of the page when we select a filter. And that's because Ah, right. Okay, no, I know why. Because we're changing the URL, so it thinks we're accessing a new page and it's scrolling back. Um, that's a problem. I mean, this will uh, sc scroll whenever the uh, URL changes. Okay, I guess le let's double check to see if that's the problem. So um, if we go in Vulkan lib, client, no, not client, um, router something. Oh, I mean routing, not lib. So Okay, I, I don't know where that is, so I'm just gonna search the whole code base for uh, use scroll. Okay, so client routing JSX, and then that's where we apply the router middleware use scroll. So if I comment this out, let's see if the problem goes away. Yeah, so it, it is uh, changing the scroll position a little bit because uh, the results change in the page, but it's not scrolling all the way back to the top. So we know that's the, the issue here. Uh, what can we do about it? Not much, to be honest, at least not in the current state of things. It would be great if you could um,
disable this on a per um, per click or per route basis and you can but you have to pass a callback like that so I guess let's let's see what kind of uh, What I would like to do is disable the the scrolling back to top if if we're only replacing the URL and not actually pushing a new value because in that case you can deduce that it's we're not trying to emulate like changing to a new page we're just trying to you know change something in the URL for other reasons. So maybe we can detect that by um, inspecting the pre prev router props and next router props objects. Let's see. So, okay, fireplace. So this is the previous router. Um, so we have the router here, we have the location. Okay, action pop, action replace. That's that's interesting. Let's compare with um, changing to a different page. Action push. Well, so I think we can do, say this. So if so, next router props location action equals replace place then we want to return false so we want to return not this uh, I'm gonna leave a comment um, I think this is a pretty sensible way of setting things up, so I'm just going to leave it in in core. If uh, later on it turns out that some people, you know, it doesn't work for some people, we can always make this configurable through a uh, a callback or something. Okay, so first we want to check that when we are changing the route. Okay. Wait. Next location action is push. So this should return true. Okay. Segmentation fault. I mean, that's can't argue with that. I guess it's not gonna work if. Uh, I honestly, I don't even know what that means. Like, you know, it says segmentation fault. I don't know what a segmentation is, so uh, it's not very helpful. Is this some kind of memory thing? What is it? Is it the uh, garbage collection or something. I, I did do some C uh, back in the days, but I forgot all about it. I remember they had a thing called pointers. So this is false. Wait. So this should be false. So the so this should be true. Why is this? What? That makes no sense. Okay, okay, okay. 
Oh, okay, cannot read property location of null. We don't really care about the, the previous route. Anyway, so it's pop. Oh yeah, okay, no, I'm, I'm tired. Yeah, because otherwise it just, yeah, okay. So, scroll, scroll back to top, okay. And now, okay. anyway, let's take new, um, new dates. So this will, still be a push but now when i do this it's a replace so it doesn't okay perfect yep. so the error was just i had this misplaced like if you put it here it's just gonna take the opposite of this where i whereas i wanted to take the opposite of the whole expression so that's great that's working um nice what else? Well, I guess while we're working on this, I'm gonna I'm gonna make it so that the the zoom. So if I do this right now, so you can see that best T here is all the way in the corner. Uh, but if I open it back up, it's gonna be centered here again. And the reason why is because it only knows about the latitude and longitude parameters. It doesn't know anything about, well, what happens after the map is centered. So that that's not ideal. And that's why we're gonna also uh, track the north, west, and southeast bounds in the URL. So where does this happen? Well, here in a room search results, we have the map on change. It does. So here on map change. And when this happens, so when the map changes, we want to change uh, these two guys in the URL as well. So in essence, doing the same thing as the, as our filters, but here. Now, you know, if we're gonna do this, we could, you could argue that we don't need to keep track of this in the state because it's gonna be in the URL anyway. So should we just do that? And I mean, you know, maybe same thing with, from and to, should we just not use the state at all? Like this is the kind of thing that could potentially come back to bite you in the ass because you can only have one URL. So if you're using the, if you're relying on the URL for everything, like we are for our filters, for example, it means you can't have uh, two maps and filters and search results on the same page at the same time. And I, I don't see this happening, but by using the URL, you're definitely like um, constraining yourself more. And just to be clear, we are already using the URL, but um, right now we are using both. So we're using the internal state of this component and then we're also um, rehydrating that state from the URL, but we're not keeping track. Yeah, so we're keeping track of these, uh, the state in two places, which yeah, it's not great. Um, yeah, I don't know. 
probably I feel like yeah we probably want to use the URL eventually so yeah but the problem with the URL you can't just do like a set state you have to actually like encode it and stuff so uh, that's actually why there's uh, this um, Like there's a bunch of packages that try to bridge the gap between uh, Redux and React Router to kind of sync both states together. And there's even like a yeah, this 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 new thing. Um, what people call Redux first routing, where uh, you don't really use React Router, but instead you rely on Redux for every, everything, and that's your single source of truth. And that's honestly that's a lot better. But um, I don't really want to look into this right now. It's it looks like a huge can of worms to open. So for now, I just want to make something that works with the tools I have. And I guess. So I, I want to do this here with the southwest and northeast bounds, but the problem is I would need to get the whole URL and turn it. Uh, maybe it's not that bad. There is actually a, a library, I think. Um, Um, parse, create. I don't know if that's what I want, maybe. Basically, we want to have some a way to convert a query string into an object and back again. So I think this is what we want. Okay, th this seems like a pain. I guess I'm not gonna... Should I do it? Okay, I mean, I'll, I'll leave that for later. Maybe it turns out we'll do the whole thing in Redux anyway, because I'm worried. I, I don't know when I, uh, if I use this thing to encode and decode the query string, I don't know like how it's gonna decode it. Like if it's gonna decode it. Um, yeah, I, I need to look into it. It's not a trivial thing to do. So for now we won't have north east and southwest in the url because you know i did it manually for the filters but now if i wanted to do the same thing for uh in uh, this here it would mean that i need to kind of rewrite this whole logic a second time and all all this stuff so um there's uh, probably a bit of refactoring that we would need to do maybe bring all the uh URL state handling logic back into here and not in filters. I don't know. I mean, it, it works like this, so let's let's not worry about it. It's it's not you know it's not hundred percent perfect, but okay. So next up, we have this screen that we want to clean up a bit. Actually, before that, so I did mention that maybe we should just use with list for this, and uh, let, let's see if it's possible. So right now, our room search results is wrapped with with search. Yeah, and one reason why we are using uh, we are not using reusing rooms list. I remember now 
is that rooms list doesn't have the map and the map if we want to display the the rooms on the map we need to have that data so it needs to be wrapped with with uh, list or with search but, but let's do this and um, okay our rooms collection <laughs> do we need anything else I don't think so because the terms will be passed by the parent component and the terms will include from to southwest northeast filters now with list we'll use the default resolver which doesn't know about these but we can tell it easily through parameters so okay are we importing this file we are so it should already know about from and to so to be clear we're not going to be using this anymore Okay, so that's that's just um, that wasn't real code. That was just a placeholder that I didn't end up using. So parameters. Um, so selector. This would be parameters dot selector dot id and return parameters and I'll do the same thing for I'll call it add from to parameter I'll do the same for um, the location so I could all do all of this in uh, a single callback but I like doing it like this I feel it's cleaner okay and this would be add uh, oh and then this one would be the filters Uh, with list is not defined that makes total sense bookings is not defined that also makes sense because um okay so so we're accessing bookings here we could just import it but ideally we would get it from the context of the resolver and so let, let's think about this let's see uh, first of all where is this called from it's actually called uh here so we have this get parameters function which gets passed the Apollo client as a, a second term. So can we get the context from the Apollo client? I feel like that should work. If not, we'll uh, modify the Vulkan core to also pass the context. So I'm not sure there is I'm not sure we have the context here. So we're gonna see how we can pass it. So 
so um collection here apollo client context and then um default resolvers get parameters terms i'm not even sure why i'm passing the the client but let's do this And defined so um, so this right here is definitely defined right so it's gonna be defined here as well but then we need to pass it on to the callback okay polo client context Okay, and now we should be able to do this. Oh, no, we are not. Uh, cannot be property bookings of undefined, really? Oh, I, okay. Maybe I was too optimistic. So the context can be undefined. Um, why is that? Okay, no, that because we don't need those. But even so, I think earlier it wasn't defined sometimes. I just want to know if it's defined or not. True, 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 false. And then when it's false, we get the, the error. Why would the context be false? Mm. Okay, let's think about this. So it means if it's false there, it's false here. So there's a point where we're calling this and not passing context. We're passing it here. Mm. Is there another place where we are calling collection.getParameters inside no, inside this, inside here. So we are calling it here, and in this case, Right, okay, that's another reason why we weren't using WithList. I remember now, it's because WithList includes all this reducer logic to update results on the client. And that logic can only work, well, within a single collection, single data model, because, so, uh, you know, the client knows about these rooms. It doesn't know about the bookings. So if we want to make a, a join, in essence, on the bookings to only show the rooms that are available, that requires knowledge about bookings and that only work that can only work on the server. So here when we are calling get parameters, uh, obviously we don't have that context, that server context that gives us access to bookings. And that's why it's not working, I assume. So what we might need to do actually is um, go back here and in our options, um, add something like disable reducer or true 
or uh, enable reducer false, I don't know. And then use that to So, uh, options here, default to true, but if, so if this is true, we return this, and if not, we'll just return previous results. So now that I'm uh, setting this to false, it should not call the reducer, which means it, means it should not call I get parameters on the client, which means the context should always be defined and we shouldn't have our error. Our error. I, I, I don't know how to pronounce that word error. It's, I don't know, there's something wrong with my mouth maybe. I can't say it, sorry. In French, it's uh, error, which is probably pretty hard to pronounce for non-French speakers actually, because it has that r sound that probably only exists in French. Anyway, so we can go back to our parameters. I think we can remove this now, and I think we can also do this again. Oh, actually, no, this way we, we know what that fourth par parameter is. Uh, let's double check that everything is working. Seems to be working fine. So the advantage of doing what we did, like uh, refactoring from a single resolver to uh, just adding parameters to the room.parameters uh, hook, there are basically three advantages. First, we are able to use with list, or I guess, okay, first, we don't need to write a custom resolver anymore. So this code is useless now. And I'm gonna or collection. I'm gonna remove it. So we have less code because we're using the default resolver now. So that's advantage number one. Advantage number two, because we're using the default resolver, uh, which is a list, we are able to use with list. So we don't need this thing anymore. And um, Are we importing with search anywhere? Yeah. And number three, because we are using like default resolver and with list, all of that. Well, with list, we would get like, we, we get pagination and some, some stuff like that for free. We don't get updates because I disabled them, like updates on the client, but that's on purpose. But uh, if, if this w was to become a, a theme, for example, well, because we're using the default resolver and the parameters, it means that you can easily add more parameters or remove these these so if you're uh, you know let's say that for some reason you, your Airbnb site doesn't have a from and to like you're you might be booking like accommodation for a festival let's say and that's at set dates so everybody will be booking the same dates so you don't want to let people choose from and to because this is a callback you can remove it with a remove callback so instead of having a monolithic resolver that you can't really change uh, we're back to a much more modular architecture. So that's that's good. Let me just check that, yeah, this still works because this is using the same with list resolver, a uh, list resolver. I mean, the only difference being that in this case, we are not specifying the from to location, north, east, north, west, so on um, stuff. Cool. So what's next on the menu? Well, this screen could use some work as well. Um, okay, so we have a mockup. Uh, photos, booking stuff here, description, reviews, and then map at the bottom. In Airbnb, it says the exact location, or, or here, it doesn't show you like the exact location, it shows you as a, an approximation. 
I'm curious to know how they do it, actually, because you'd think, like, can you see that? I'm not sure. Uh, if if you just pass like the the coordinates of the center of the map center, that's just like uh, just as good as passing the. Oh, it's React too, so yeah, even better. But you can see they're using uh, higher order components as well. I'm not sure what they use for styling, actually. Uh, let's find our map. It looks like they're using some kind of uh, styled components approach, where like uh, instead of you know, having styles, you have a spacing component. I tried using it for a project. I, I really had a hard time, like, um, I'm still maybe too used to the old way of doing things with um, CSS. So I'm just trying to find that map. Okay, because I couldn't right click the map, but let, let's do this. Okay, map, so center, so it gives you coordinates. Now, if those are the coordinates of the actual room, I mean, maybe it, it kind of defeats the purpose of using, uh, of like obfuscating. Because, you know, I can see, oh, that's actually really close to here. Wow. Like, I can see exactly where that place is. So, I don't know what the point of this obfuscation is. Maybe it's just for non-technical people, but for uh, someone who's trying to crawl the, the, the map, you know, I don't think that would help much, unless they fake the coordinates. But then how much do they fade them by? Like, are they like a couple meters off or, or is the place like, maybe, maybe they only ensure that the place is within the circle, but then they translate it, they move it certain uh, number of meters or something. That's probably what I would do. Anyway, I hope I don't have to implement that for uh, our project because that sounds like a pain. I would probably just have a circle centered around the coordinates and, you know, not worry too much if someone tries to hack my uh, obfuscation. But anyway, that's for later. For now, uh, by the way, as you can see, Osaka is super cheap. Wow, that's cheap. Yeah, you should come visit. You can... Uh... Oh, that's the place from the other day. I mean, it looks probably nicer than my place, to be honest. So yeah, um, come visit Osaka, or if you can't, tune in next time where we'll uh, work on this page. See ya.